My life is being maximized as I'm taught the Word of God. The Word of God is maximizing my life. All right, I want to share with you again this morning, I want to talk to you about receiving the grace of breakthrough. Amen? Financially. Um, you know, the economy is, is what it is. Uh, it, it's what it is. And, uh, but we don't live by man's economy. We make our own economy with God. Now, I'm going to say that again. We make our own economy, and we make our own economy with God because God is the believer's economy. God is the believer's source. Okay? God uses resources, but he is the source. So no matter what is bringing in finances to you, that's a resource from God. But God is the giver and sustainer of all things. You got it? So never ever think that you will run out when you have your right mind about who your source is. Okay? Now, let me say to you like this. <laughs> you can get laid off, but you still haven't lost your source. Now, I'm going to make a statement right now. Some of you may love it. Some of you may not, but who, who can handle it? I'm going to have to say it like, like this. It is what it is. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it like that. <laughs> the base of our financial success is our tithes and offering to God. Let me, let me try that again. The base of our financial success in God is our tithes and our offerings. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It does not matter what the world's economy is doing. It does not matter the challenges in financial life. The basis and the strength of the believer's economy is our tithing and our offerings. You determine, listen to me, you determine whether you are going to be good or, or fine, everything's going to work fine for you or not, financially. Okay? And the problem is that many don't believe God and don't believe the word concerning tithe and offering. And that, that's a problem. Let me tell you a secret what it is. Giving is a grace. Let me try that again. Giving is a grace, and it gives us opportunity for breakthrough and breaking forth. Now, let me, let me, let me do this. A lot of times we talk about breaking, breakthrough, but a lot of us have already received breakthrough, and now we want to break forth. Can you understand that? The wall has been broken. I broke through that. But now I need to advance. Can you hear me? So I advance by continuing, watch this, to flow in the word of God, to do what God told me to do when it comes to my finances. Amen. 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 So with that, we're going to look at some things here that I have prepared. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Let me see it. The reason so many have trouble sowing is because sowing is a revelation. Let me try that again. Giving is really a revelation. You have to have the benefits and the blessing of giving as a revelation. In other words, the light has to come on to you as to what it's really about. So many think that when they give, they give it to a man. No, what you're doing is you're participating in the system of God in the earth. And the system of God that's in the earth is actually a spiritual principle. 
when you do a natural act, it triggers spiritual release. Can you understand that? My natural act of tithing, spirit, it, it triggers a spiritual release, which causes finances to return to me. Okay. And so because you try to deal with God so much in the head, with your intelligence, it's not a revelation to you. So because it's not a revelation to you, whether you do it or not, doesn't matter. So therefore, you miss out on your brick and forth. Amen. Now, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to preach guilt or nothing like that. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. Uh, but what I'm trying to get you to wake up to something. Is that the really, the really the guarantee you have of your blessing is through your obedience to God and your tithes and your offering. God is not a man that he should lie. The word of God declares it's impossible for God to lie. So if I believe it's impossible for him to lie and I tithe, then I have great expectation that he's going to open the windows of heaven for me and pour out blessings for me that I won't have room enough to receive, just like he said. I have to believe that because then it will put me in a place where I will believe I will never have lack in my life. And the way you attack lack is through your giving. Amen. The way you attack lack is through your giving. I don't care who you are. Let me, let me tell you a secret about tithing. Can I tell you a secret about tithing? God didn't say after you tithe for a while. That's not what the word says. The word says bring the tithe and you pay the tithe. And he says he opens the windows of heaven. So it's not a, it's not a, a long time doing it to prove I'm going to do it. No. When I begin to tithe, the moment I tithe, the moment the promise is released. You got it? So we have to have a mind. Listen, we have to have a mind that when I do what God told me to do in my finances, it's a done deal. I don't have to wait 400 years to see it come to pass. And let me, let me tell you, God is not a layaway God. God doesn't say, you tithe and you offer, and I'm going to put something on layaway for you. No, he opens it up to you now. The problem is a lot of times our mind and our faith doesn't catch up with what God has promised. Can I say that again? Our minds and our faith has to catch up with what God has promised. Because God cannot lie. So if he said, if I tithe, he's going to take care of business. Okay. All right. Now, oh, my God. When you sow seed, seed will break the debt and the death cycle of your finances. Your giving breaks the death of your finances, and it breaks the debt from over your life. However, there's a key to that. If you don't use wisdom, I don't care what principle you practice. You can't get out of debt and then go right back tomorrow and do it again. Oh, thank God I paid off all my debt. And then tomorrow you go back and you load it back up again. <laughs> anybody here? I said, anybody here? All right, now, look with me at Mark chapter 4. Because I really want you to understand how this thing works. Yeah, because the harvest is, oh my God. You know, Jesus said something, I'm going to show it to you in a minute. Mark 4. In other words, a little, so I have to put these on. Mark 4. And I want you to look with me at verse number 26. You see it? Now watch what this says. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of who? 
as if a man should cast seed into the ground. What does he do? And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle, because the harvest is what? The harvest has come. You got it? So, in other words, watch this. When you sow your seed, question, when do you sow a seed? Or when a seed is sown, what condition does it have to be in? It has to be dead. <laughs> you know, before you plant seed, it has to die. You got it? You never plant a fresh seed. The seed has to die. And once that seed has died, then you plant it, and that seed can cause more to come forward. You with me? That's why Jesus called himself a seed. He couldn't, be, he couldn't just go to the cross and live. He had to grow to the cross and die because he was the seed for the rest of us. Had he not died, then we wouldn't be saved. So when you sow a seed, that seed begins to process. Now, I didn't say your tithe. I said your seed, your offering. When you plant it, it begins to go through that process of growth. Now, watch this. What happens is you start receiving a little first. And then as it starts receiving that little, as you let that seed continue, that seed continues to grow. And then more will come in. And as it comes in, then it's time to pull it off. The problem is we see the first sign of growth and you eat it up. You know, uh, I know some people that have businesses. Amen. Great business, great ideas, and people would support it. But the moment they start getting clients and made a few dollars, they went and got the car. So they ate the seed before it was time. And therefore, the business failed. Can you hear me? Watch this. He said in verse 30, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? And he says, it is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it's sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that are in the earth. Hello. But when it is sown, it groweth up. <laughs> Not only does it grow up, but it cometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So what is he saying here? When a seed is sown, that seed grows to be able to support life. Come on now. Just like when you sow your seed, you receive harvest back. And there's a greater harvest, watch this, than you sow. Why? Because every seed, when it's sown, it produces more than just the one seed that you sow. If you plant an apple seed, one apple seed, what does it produce? A whole tree of fruit. A tree, watch this, that continues to bring forth year after year after year. So we got the mind when we sow a seed, when that seed is sown, that's it off that seed. I got a harvest off it, that's it. No, you harvest your seed every year. Come on, guys. So if we, if, if we get our thinking right about our seed, we are beginning to expect harvest from a seed that we've sown continually. And what you exercise faith for, it comes to pass. 
So if, I'm, if I have the right mind about my sowing, it's going to break me forth. And watch this, because if I have the right mind, the seed that I'm sowing is I have the right mind is going to continue to produce in my life. Therefore, I will never have lack in my life. It's a principle of God. It's not my principle. I didn't make it up. It's the way of God. But a lot of things as believers we don't understand when it comes to the financial system of God. Amen. So we have that one-time harvest mind when that thing want to keep producing. So you keep the soil tilled. You keep everything. Every year you, you, you tend to that soil. So what? So that it continue to produce. In other words, you never lose sight of the seed that you sowed. Amen. Today, I'm still living off seed I've sown in the past. <laughs> and so are you, really. You just don't know it. Amen. You know them, them, them times when money show up and you wasn't looking for it? You know, sometimes money just pop up, bam. And you say, I don't know where that came from. It just all of a sudden came. Baby, you better think back on those seeds you were sowing. Let me tell you a secret about dealing with your finances. Always keep your mind, listen to me, always keep your mind on God when it comes to your finances. Knowing that God is the one behind my financial success. God is the one that has prospered and God is the one that has set it up for it to work for me. I don't care about no economy busting down. It doesn't matter. <laughs> some of you right here right now, you can testify. And some of you looking right now by the internet, our live stream, our I praise family, and even the praise members, you can testify even right now that even during this time, you've been prospering. Because your prosperity has nothing to do with what's going on in the world. Amen. Now, if you succumb to what's going on in the world, then that's another story. But if you understand that God is still my source no matter what's going on, God is my help, I don't care what's happening, then you will never succumb to broke. It's his system, not mine. I didn't make it up. I just joined the ears, that's all. I, I, I turned my mind to him and, and, his, and his finances and not my way. Oh, shoot, I, I'd be eating mine up if it wasn't for him. Amen. I'd have ate up some stuff. Amen. So, so let, let, let me just say it like this to you. Don't listen to other people's opinions about what God said. When you listen to other people's opinions, you cut yourself off from your breakthrough. You cut yourself off from breaking forth because everybody got their own opinion about God and about his word. You got me? Oh, that's one of them prosperity preachers. Every preacher ought to be a prosperity preacher. Yeah, ain't, ain't no preacher. You ain't preaching if you ain't preaching prosperity. Because whatever, listen to me, saints. If I preach to you and I minister to you something that's going to make you better, I just prospered you. So if you're teaching and ministering stuff that's going to keep people down, then you're not a prosperity preacher. You're a poverty preacher. So everything that comes to you, every word that's ministered to you ought to make you increase, ought to make you better, ought to make you greater, ought to make you advance. That's why I'm proud to say I'm a prosperity preacher. Not only for you, but me too. <laughs> Praise his name forever. All right? Now, in Mark, we looked at Mark, right? Let me tell you what actually was, when, when you sow that dead seed, amen, you bury it. You know, Jesus was dead for they buried him. Wait, 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 let me try it again. Jesus was dead for they buried him. They didn't bury him alive. No, he was dead before they buried him. Now watch this. Jesus, through being dead, was raised again. He experienced a resurrection. 
So when you sow that dead seed and the harvest coming, what you're actually experiencing is a financial resurrection. Something was dead has come to life. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you hear what I said? Now, what happens is you, you begin to, to receive, learn how to receive, watch this, continuous harvest. Not just every now and then you see something happening. But you receive continuous harvest. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shake together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. The same way you meet it out or give it out is the same way it come back to you. That's the word. So you put yourself, watch this, by my sowing, I put myself in position to continue to receive. Okay. Some of, to be honest with you, some of you, well, I'm honest with you, but to, 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 to make this point clear, some of you, listen to what I'm saying to you, some of you, your businesses and things that you're doing, the only reason why they are survived and have kept going is because of your faithfulness to God. Come on, tell the truth. Your giving has kept you. Let me say that again. Your giving has kept you. In Ecclesiastes 11 chapter, let's look at that. Because some people, in times like this, they stop sowing. Because they're scared that if something goes wrong, what am I going to have? Amen. Watch what it says here in the 11th chapter of Ecclesiastes. You ready? Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. What kind of evil upon the earth right now? If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Huh. So when things distract you and keep you from sowing, when you get a report that things are going bad and things are not going to do this and things, and then you stop sowing because of those reports, it's a fear. And you don't recognize, you think you're doing self-preservation because I got to have something. And all the time you're destroying your self-preservation. Amen. Verse 5. And thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning so thy seed. And in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. You don't know which one it is going to bring forth the thing that you're looking for. Or maybe both will. <sighs> Boy, let me teach you something real quick. One of the primary things that God always taught people he led was the first thing was given. To worship him with giving. To worship him with giving. How many of you ever seen these old movies uh, where they make sacrifices to the gods? You ever seen a old movie like the, what was the, what's them old Arnold Schwarzenegger movies? Conan the Barbarian, look at she knows she'd be watching. Conan and <laughs> some of the movies like that. They always got some God that they offering to. Come on. Every cult, even today, offers to what they believe in. 
Because everybody knows within them, there's something in you know you're supposed to worship and that you're supposed to give to something greater than yourself. It's in you. And that's why people, you know, they've got to find something to worship. They've got to find something to do something towards. Because God put it in you to know you're supposed to do it. It's just they're confused about who it is they're supposed to do it towards. Amen. Come on, guys. That's why, that's why a lot of times you get confused about where your money's supposed to go, where your offering's supposed to go. Because you don't know the God that has spoken to give like you should. I'm not going to tell you you don't know him because you do know him. But there's a, there's, a, there's a degree that you grow up into where you really come to know what God really expects. Amen. And so when it comes to, come to my breaking through, when it comes to my breaking forth and going forth, going higher, that's why the Word of God declares that he will cause me to walk upon mine high places. In other words, God got some high places for us. And he says, he, he said, no matter what, my God, in that, in, that, in that book chapter, he says, he don't care what's going on. He describes all kinds of hell that was going on. But he said, yet will I ascend to mine high places. So even though everything is going on, COVID and everything else is hitting, flu, moo, boo, everything that's happening, it doesn't matter. God will still, if you keep your mind right about God and your finances with God, you keep your acts right with those finances, God will cause you to ascend to your high places because he got some high places already prepared for you. That's why I love about that Ephesians 2 in the, in the Amplified. God already got some paths that he's prepared ahead of time for me to live, to walk in those paths that I might watch, or that I might live the good life that he prepared ahead of time for me. So I know that I know my tithe and my offering has brought me in some good places. And so God has brought me into some places where I know I didn't have, I, I didn't, it wasn't me. You know, when you, when you do right by God financially, God will cause you to have favor in the sight of people that you never dreamed you would have. People be calling on you from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and you be figuring out, trying to figure out where these people know me from. Amen. You know, God will set it up so people won't let you go down. You got an issue? What, what's going on? Come here, let me help you with this and that and other thing. But what God really wants for you, listen to me, is for you to get to the place where you have no need of help. You already hear what I said. That you're sufficient in all his sufficiency and you never come to a place where you really have need That's the word. That's 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 and 7 and 8. That's his word. I didn't make that up, y'all. It's in the word. Okay, y'all want to see it? Go to 2 Corinthians 9 real quick. Second Corinthians 9. Bless his holy name forever. Glory to God. I am going to uh, have to get my other, I want to pull up my amplifier right quick so I can really show you what it says there. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all know God is good. Okay. Ninth chapter. You have it? All right. Hallelujah. 
Look with me at verse number 8. No, no, no. Let's back up to verse number 6. Remember this. This amplified. He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly, and he who sows generously, that blessing may come to someone, will also reap generously and with blessings. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving and God listen to this and God is able to make all grace every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation that's what God said. That's his word. That he will supply you, give you such abundance that you never require aid. Look at somebody and say, that's me. Matter of fact, don't even look at them. I just tell yourself, that's me. Well, I don't, you know, you might be scared to say it, but that's me. Come on, I praise family. Come on, praise out there. Say that with me. Hallelujah. That's me. God supplies me abundantly so I have no need of aid. Now what should we say? No matter what the circumstances or situation. That's what it said, no matter what the circumstance. So I can't blame, who Father? I can't blame COVID for my problem. I can't blame economic downturn for my issues. Because I can put myself in a position no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation, I always have enough. Why well, require no aid? Question. Do you believe it? Well, Pastor, you just don't know. I've been broke so many times. Well, that's your mind. That's your mind. That's, that's what you're expecting. You can't keep being broke without expecting it. Okay. I like that little boy they had on the, going around circuit on the internet. The boy was doing a math problem. <laughs> and he said, so-and-so had one dollar, one quarter, one nickel, how much money does so-and-so have? The little boy laughed and said, he broke. <laughs> so now you think about that. That ain't, that ain't you, is it? Can y'all hear what I'm saying? The Lord our God is faithful. He is gracious. He is good. And he is kind. Nobody like our God. Nobody is like our God. If you're trusting in your finances, he'll come through for you like a every time. Hallelujah. But I like the part, Linda, where he says that he will put me in a situation where I have, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, I have no need of help. I like that. I think I'll take some of that. What do you think about that, Thurman? You take some of that? What do you think about that, Tony? You take some of that? How about you, Brother Eric? You take some of that? Anybody don't want none of it? How about you, I praise family? You don't want that either? <laughs> hey, before we go, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you know the next time we upload. Remember, we are maximizing your life with the Word of God. We love you. We'll see you next time.